easily one of the best apps I have found since de-googling and de-appling my life. For those of you who don't know, I decided to leave the Apple ecosystem last year, and this year I decided to de-Google my life. Now, the reasons behind that are varied, but more or less, I wanted to get away from big tech. I wanted to be able to take back ownership of all of my data, and one of the most key and important aspects of that data was my photos. I didn't want my photos being scanned and training some big tech AI algorithm, so I decided to do some research and find an open source photo application to store my photos. Now, in the beginning of the year, I was really going gung-ho about leaving Google. I went a little bit to the extreme. I deleted all of my data and exported all of my photos onto an external hard drive because I was just getting a little bit paranoid. Yes, I went a little bit far, but in the end, I ended up discovering this amazing app, Ente Photos. I discovered Ente Photos when I was testing out different alternative app stores. I was using F-Droid at the time and Ente was in their list of apps. The great thing about Ente is that it's in every app store. So whether you're using iOS or using Google Play or you're using an alternative app store such as F-Droid or even Aurora store, you'll be able to access Ente Photos. Now, when I started using Ente Photos, I primarily used it for professional reasons. I need an app that can work across different platforms and can enable me to easily upload and access my photos and videos as I'm editing. This is a non-negotiable for me. This is something that I used Apple a lot for because I found it convenient that it worked cross devices. Well, if you had Apple devices, that is. What I love about Ente is that it works on every device, whether you have an Apple device, Android, or more importantly, Linux. I had also decided to leave Windows this year, so I am using Linux, Fedora to be exact, and I needed an app that worked on the desktop, and Ente Photos does that. I was able to easily take my videos, access them via my desktop, and edit seamlessly. This was a huge advantage for me, and it really changed my workflow in a positive way. For those of you who don't know, I'm constantly testing different devices, whether those devices are Apple devices, Android, custom ROMs, and even more recently, a Linux phone. I really need an app that can work across all these platforms and work more or less seamlessly with my workflow. And honestly, Ente has not let me down. I, it is one of the first apps that I usually install on any device that I'm using because I'm testing the cameras usually. And I wanna be able to connect all of my devices through one app when it comes to photos and videos. As a parent, I'm always taking photos when I least expect it, and I just want all of my devices to keep up with that. Now, that being said, some devices take better photos than others, of course, but as a content creator and as a parent, this app seems to keep up with my lifestyle quite seamlessly. Now, previously, I did a video reviewing and showing how Ente Photos works more or less. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it above. But honestly, it works just like any other Photos app, but again, a bit better because you can work cross-platform more seamlessly, I believe, than even Google Photos. Yes, Google Photos can work on iOS, but Google Photos is atrocious on Linux, and honestly, I'm tired of Google having all of my information, and it was making me a bit uneasy having my child's face scanned and sent God knows where at that point. When I started using Ente, I only, again, used it for professional reasons, but after talking with Ente, I got more comfortable and understood how it worked behind the scenes. One of the great things about Ente is that it's open source, so their code is available, of course, for audit and for people to keep an eye on it to make sure that your data and all of the information contained within the application are more or less safe. I've been using a lot of open source applications for this reason. I don't want to use big tech and I don't like everything being hidden from me. I want it to be front facing and have more peace of mind when I'm trying to use an app and where that app is coming from. I learned that Ente does use machine learning, but it's only on your device. So it's only taking that information you give it and only keeping it on your device. So you're not giving it to a company to train their AI models to make them better, to <laughs> probably generate crazy AI videos. And it just gives me a little bit more peace of mind knowing that it's centered on my device. 
Now recently I've been getting more and more depth from a personal side of using Entei Photos rather than a professional side. I had already become comfortable with using the app professionally, but this summer I went on a trip with my family and I've been celebrating some birthdays and I found that there are some amazing features that I didn't highlight previously in my last video. Now, as far as going on trips, I know some people might be more organized with putting their photos in specific names, dates. You can do that easily on Ente Photos, of course, but some of us are quite lazy like myself. We've become accustomed to tech kind of taking that task out and not having to think about it as much. And Ente does divide things into albums, of course, and also highlights people without names. You can choose to add names if you wish and it groups things by dates and locations. So this summer I went on a trip to Vietnam. Now when I search in Ente Photos and I want to find those photos, I just type in Vietnam and I have access to all those photos automatically, which saves me a lot of time. I don't have to go into my photos app and automatically label things, put them into specific albums. It just is a peace of mind. Another cool feature, of course, that you find maybe on other photo services but makes it that much more important when you're not using other services is that you can create a shared album. Recently, my son celebrated his fifth birthday. There were about eight kids there and the parents weren't there during that party. So I decided to take pictures. And in order to share those pictures with the parents who weren't there, I was able to create a shareable album, which allowed parents to be able to download the photos with no problem. And they didn't even need an Ente account for this. This saves a lot of time, a lot of hassle, and honestly was a lifesaver because most people use a different platform. Not everybody's on iOS, not everybody's on Google, and I just wanted a peace of mind. So having an app that can work makes it downloadable, makes it easy for parents to access. It's just, it's really great. It's also great, of course, if you want to create specific albums for events, or just make it just easier to share across platforms. I can't emphasize this enough. This is the biggest plus for the specific app is the cross-platform utilization. Uh, again, as somebody who uses multiple different environments for testing purposes, different devices, just having one app that I can consistently go to and know that it works really gives me peace of mind and I can't emphasize it enough. Now, there are some downsides that I found using the app. I'm not going to be, this is all positive, everything's perfect but they're really minor things and mostly related to the desktop experience. I think a lot of people don't use desktop applications and don't really go into the details of editing and using specific items when they're going into their photo management. But as somebody who is a content creator and has experience using, of course, Apple Photos, Google Photos on desktop environments, I really like that Ente works across all the platforms. But there are some negatives that I found within the desktop environment that I think is just more of a UI issue, maybe a redesign would really help the user experience. And that comes to the editing menu. So you can make the edits, no problem. You can change what you need to change. But when it comes to exiting the edit menu, it's not really straightforward and user friendly as some other applications may be. You have to actually scroll down to the bottom of the menu, choose to save a copy if you wish to save that edited version or you can decide to undo all of your edits and you'll be returned to the menu. But by default, if you just wanna go back to your photo album, it's not really straightforward and evident as a user. And I've lost some time, I know, going back and forth between photos because again, as a content creator, I'm constantly going through different photos, making certain edits. And I just feel that it wasn't as user-friendly as it could be for the desktop version. I'm gonna specify this is the Linux desktop environment, so maybe it's different on other platforms, but I'm not using Windows and iOS at the moment, so I can only speak from this version. Another issue with the desktop environment was the ability to create albums. Again, I wanted to create a shared album directly from the desktop. I wanna emphasize that I'm visually impaired, so I do use desktop environments more often and then the mobile environments for certain situations because I just can't see. The mobile app works great. Honestly, it works fantastic with any accessibility needs I may have, but globally, I tend to go towards desktop apps for certain photo modifications, creations, and things like this. And I found it difficult to find how to create a new album for me personally and be able to share that album easily. Um, this happens on a lot of apps, to be honest. I think most apps are not 
optimized for desktop apps because people tend to go to their mobile phones and that's completely understandable. So desktop apps usually fall behind when it comes to the development updates. One huge plus I found for this specific application was the pricing. Now I was spending a lot of money with Google storage and with iCloud storage, I was spending at least 100 euros per year managing both of my photos on different platforms. I had a lot of duplicates, of course, and it was just a big mess and a big money pit, to be honest. When I switched to Ente, I got 10 gigabytes for free, so that allowed me to kind of migrate my life, my essential photos at the moment, but once I wanted to upgrade, I found the pricing super affordable and super reasonable for what you get. Um, if you want to suggest for friends or family to join, they can give you free gigabytes of storage. So essentially you don't even have to pay if you get enough people to create their accounts, which I find is an awesome option. If you're interested in trying out Ente Photos, I highly recommend it. I'll leave a link down below, but you can find their app in any app store, which is great. So if you're somebody who's more open source focused, you can find them on Fjoid, Aurora Store, of course, Google Play Store, and the Apple App Store. I want to thank all of my members for supporting the channel and thank you for watching and see you soon.